Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. In our lecture on the decimal number system, we explain that this is an example of positional notation. In positional notation, the column occupied by a digit determines the multiplier for that digit. Since the decimal system is base 10, each column multiplier differs by a factor of 10 from the adjacent columns. The multiplier for the rightmost digit is 1. The digits to the left are multiplied by 10, 100, and so on. The value of a decimal number is the sum of all its digits times their multipliers. For example, the value of the decimal number 1879 is 1 times 1000 plus 8 times 100 plus 7 times 10 plus 9 times 1. Using decimal notation, we can represent any integer. But decimal notation is also capable of representing fractional quantities by adding a decimal point immediately to the right of the one's digit. We can then add as many digits as we like to the right of the decimal point. Each of these column multipliers is one-tenth the size of the column to the left, continuing the pattern of multipliers. The first digit to the right of the decimal point is multiplied by one-tenth. The next digit is multiplied by one-hundredth, and so on. Just as with integers, the value of the decimal number is the sum of all its digits times their multipliers. For example, the number 1879.25 represents 1,000 plus 800s plus 7 tens plus 9 ones plus 2 tenths plus 5 one hundredths. Using a number line, we can see how each digit adds different size divisions to the number. For example, the decimal number 3.425 represents 3 units plus 4 tenths of a unit plus 2 hundredths of a unit plus 5 thousandths of a unit. Any fraction can be converted to a decimal number by simply dividing the numerator by the denominator. We can do this using long division or with a calculator. The result of this division will be a decimal number which is equivalent to the fraction. This decimal number will either repeat or terminate. A terminating decimal number has a finite number of digits after the decimal point. A repeating decimal number has a sequence of digits after the decimal point, which repeats forever. Repeating decimals can be written with three dots, called an ellipsis, to indicate that the pattern repeats forever. Or a bar can be placed over the digits, which repeat. For instance, we can indicate a repeating three by placing a bar over the three. Likewise, a bar of a sequence of digits indicates that the sequence repeats forever. Some unit fractions, when written in decimal form, can be represented with a finite number of digits, while others cannot. For instance, the fractions one-half, one-fourth, one-fifth, one-eighth, and one-tenth can be written with a finite number of digits. On the other hand, the decimal equivalent of one-third is a decimal point followed by an infinite number of threes. One-sixth is a decimal point followed by a one and then an infinite number of sixes. One-seventh is a decimal point followed by the infinitely repeating sequence one, four, two, eight, five, seven and one-ninth is a decimal point followed by an infinite number of ones. You may be wondering why some fractions can be represented with a finite number of digits, while others cannot. 
To see why, let's take a look at the fraction one half on the number line. One half can be represented by exactly five tenths. So one half is equivalent to the decimal number 0 0.5. On the other hand, the fraction one third is larger than three tenths, but smaller than four tenths. If we subdivide these divisions into hundredths, we see that one third falls somewhere between 33 hundredths and 34 hundredths. If we subdivide these divisions into thousandths, we see that one third falls somewhere between 333 thousandths and 334 thousandths. If we subdivide these divisions into 10 thousandths, we see that one third still falls between two divisions. It is larger than 0.3333, but smaller than 0.3334. We can repeat this process indefinitely. No matter how close we zoom in, the fraction one-third will never fall exactly on a division. We will just keep adding threes after the decimal point forever. So although some rational numbers, like one-half, can be represented by a finite number of digits, others, like one-third, cannot. We have seen that by dividing the numerator by the denominator, any fraction can be converted to an equivalent decimal number, which will either terminate or repeat. In the next lecture, we will see how to convert any terminating or repeating decimal number to a fraction.